As per new NABL 112 guidelines, what are the points laboratory has to consider for risk analysis? Lab director is responsible for the implementation of the management system, including the application of risk management to all aspects of the laboratory operations so that risks to patient care and opportunities to improve are systematically identified and addressed. It is requirement of 5.6 clause that is risk management as per ISO 15189 2022 standard. The components of risk management are a. Risk identification, identification and listing of all risks across the entire testing processes, covering pre-examination, examination, post-examination, post -examination, manpower, equipment, facility and design, supplies, quality control practices, policies etc. b. Risk evaluation based on severity and likelihood of occurrence and detectability of occurrences, prioritization of risks. C. Risk mitigation through preventive actions. D. Estimation of residual risk, through monitoring. The laboratory shall review its risk management at least once a year and whenever there is a change in process or design, records shall be kept that reflect the identified risks, their priority, actions taken to eliminate them and their effectiveness. For risk management one should also consider thesis points which is mentioned in thesis clauses. In Clause 6.2 for visiting doctors, the frequency of the visits can be determined by the range, volume and complexity of the tests provided by each discipline and for authorization of reports. Use of risk analysis or root causes into existing inadequacies should also be used in determining the frequency of part-time visit and the same documented and verified every year. 6.4 Equipment, small centrifuges slash shakers slash vortex mixers may be used inside cabinets after assessing risks. 6.5 Calibration and traceability, verification schedule shall be prepared by the laboratory based on the factors e.g., workload, frequency of usage of equipment, downtime and taking risk into consideration. 6.8 Externally provided product and services. The laboratory shall do risk assessment for transport of samples to the referral laboratory within acceptable time period to ensure sample integrity. Quality indicators to monitor the performance of this activity to be defined and monitored based on risk assessment e.g., number discordant diagnosis between glass versus digital images, delays in turnaround times, and deferral rates, examples, failure or inability to render a diagnosis etc. 7.2 Pre-Examination If any deviation from routine has occurred in sample extraction it shall be documented in the request forms. The lab shall assess the significance of deviation and the risk associated on interpretation of test results. The laboratory shall do risk assessment for transport of samples within acceptable transport time to ensure that sample integrity is not compromised. Adequate training provided to them to ensure competency or for understanding the processes of the laboratory or based on risk assessment should also be documented and frequently verified. If any deviations are identified appropriate corrective actions shall be undertaken and implemented, which shall also be reflected in the training. A log of sample collection time shall accompany the samples being transported to the laboratory. Periodic review for sample volume needs to be defined based on risk assessment. 7.3.7 Ensuring the validity of examination results. Irrespective of the size of the laboratory, two levels of QC shall be included on the day of performing the test and subsequently one level every shift slash eight hour. The frequency of run may also be based on risk assessment of harm to the patient due to an erroneous result and the stability or robustness of the examination method. Thank you and all the best. This is Dr. Ravi Kumar, Lead Assessor NABL.